OnSignal allows you to personalize your messages in a variety of ways to create meaningful connections to your users and boost engagement. In this video, we'll show several different methods to include your users' information in messages, such as their name, contact information, order number, or any other data you have within OnSignal. We'll cover the basics of using Liquid Syntax, how to leverage custom data using our API and pre-existing templates, and then look at some more complicated examples using conditional logic. To personalize your messages, you'll need to use Liquid Syntax. You'll also need to use data tags for custom user information. Please see our documentation for details on how to set and update data tags. In this section, I'm going to show you how to access the value of your data tags. I'm going to show you how to write Liquid Syntax tags from scratch. I'm going to show you how you can set a default value for your tags for when your user doesn't have that tag set. In the following example, we're going to build a push notification. But as Liquid Syntax follows a standard set of rules, you can use the examples given here in any messaging channel. To get started, let's create a new push notification. We'll keep this nice and simple for now and send a personalized message to encourage the users to come back to our app. We'll start by greeting the user. To do so, let's type hi, and then we'll add some liquid syntax to access a data tag we have called first name. We can do this by typing the syntax out ourselves, or we can make life a little easier by clicking the plus symbol in the top right corner and selecting personalization tag. Now we can choose from any of the data tags that are available and even include a default value if the selected tag is not set for a user. We'll select first name from the list and set the default to there. Once we click insert, the liquid syntax is inserted for us into the message body. When we send this message, everything included the curly braces will be replaced with the user's first name if they have this data tag set, or if not, they'll simply be replaced with there. Let's write the rest of our message. We want the user to come back to the app, which in this case is a classic arcade game. We've also stored the user's current level as a data tag, so let's entice them back with a lot of motivation. add an emoji here as well, just to let them know that we're being playful. There, I think that'll get their attention. Let's turn the message now and see how that looks. When the push arrives on the user's phone, we can see that the name and level tags have been replaced with the values of the data tags for that user. If you're looking for a way to send more complicated personalized messages, including using the user's data to send specific images or links, you can use the custom data parameter of our Create Notification API. The custom data property on our Create Notification API is a perfect way to get transactional data into messages. Examples of transactional messages might be abandoned carts, payments due, updated settings, order confirmations, user validation, and much more. In this section, I'm going to show you some examples of adding custom data tags into existing templates and how to send custom data via the Create Notification API. To send custom data through the API, we first need a template which uses the correct liquid syntax to insert the custom data into the message. Rather than create one from scratch, let's look at an email template we created earlier to see how it works. In this email, we can see various liquid syntax tags, but you might notice that these tags look a little different from those we saw in our earlier example. These tags are referencing custom data that can be passed in via our API in the form of a JSON object. In this template, the email is designed to show users a list of properties they might be interested in purchasing. We can see here that we have the JSON object for property, and we can reference the various attributes of that property. You may also notice that these properties are wrapped within a for loop. I'll go into more details on for loops later on when we talk about advanced liquid syntax logic. You can see that we've included an image in the template as well by typing in the HTML for the image. And then within the HTML, we've set the source of the image as a custom data attribute, which will be replaced when we send the message with the custom data. Now we have our template, let's look at sending this via our API. Here we've got an API request ready to go in Postman. You can see here the custom data is outlined as a JSON object, and then we've got the properties object within that. For the properties object, we've got a property for the image URL, the reference, the location, asking price, and summary. You see also we've got numerous property objects here, each with their own attributes. As within our template, we had a for loop that cycled through these when sending. We'll click send and have a look and see how that comes out. Now that the email's arrived, we can scroll down and see that the various properties have been inserted within the email with all of their attributes intact. The images are populated, 
and that the property descriptions and values have been populated as well. Now that we've covered the basics of using Liquid Syntax and custom data to send messages, let's take a quick look at some ways in which we can use Liquid Syntax with Logic to create more complex personalizations. In this section, I'm going to take you through using Advanced Liquid Logic to create if statements, maths functions, date functions, and for loops. A really common use of incorporating logic into your liquid syntax is using an if statement to change the message that you're sending depending on the value of user's data tags or user properties. For example, you might be sending instructions for how to perform an action in your app, where the action required is different depending on the app version they're using. Alternatively, you might want to send a message that changes depending on a user's character class in your game. If statements could be really beneficial in cases such as this, in order to allow you to send one message rather than a different message for each set of users. So in this example, we have a message that just starts with the word, Dear Customer. So why don't we customise this, as we have the genders of our customers here, so we can add in Sir or Madam, or just leave it blank if they haven't specified a gender. So, to do that, we need to start by creating our if statement. To do that by opening with a curly brace, a percentage symbol, and typing if. Then, we use the variable name gender, and compare that with female. See if they're female and then we'll close that tag with a percentage symbol and a curly brace. Then we type in what we want it to be if they are female, in this case, madam. And let's do the same again with an else if statement for if they're male. Notice here that in else if, the E is missing. So we're checking for male, and we'll close that set of curly braces and type in sir. Then we'll find, open a final one for an else statement, so catching anything that's not male or female. And then we'll just leave that as customer. And finally, we close the entire if statement with an end if. Brilliant. Now you'll notice here there's a bit of space either side of madam and sir and customer. Now these are essential for syntax reasons, but to remove those when the final message goes out, we just put in a minus symbol here, a little dash next to each percentage symbol, and that just removes the white space around the value. Once we've done that, we should be ready to send. So that message will evaluate out so that anyone with the gender of female will receive madam, anyone with the gender of male will receive sir, and everyone else will receive customer. Let's see how that looks. We see the messages come through saying, dear sir. Next up, we're going to talk about math functions. Math functions can be useful to dynamically calculate figures based on users' data tags. It can be used to calculate the difference between users' allowances and their usage, for example, or show the percentage that they could have saved when buying one item over another. It's possible to create relatively complex math functions by combining different operators such as plus, minus, times, divided by, and round, ceiling, and floor. Let's have a look at an example. In this example, we want to show users how far away they are from levelling up in a game. So we'll start by using our level tag. Then, in the next function, we're going to use some maths to calculate how far away they are from their next level by minusing the XP they currently have. In the next section, we want to point out to them that they are going up to the next level above the level they're at. So we'll add plus one to the level. Next we want to show them the next level up, so we use plus one to show the next level. Finally, we want to show them how many kills they need before they reach their next level. So, we'll start by doing the same calculation before to get how many XP they need, and then we'll divide it by 20, because that's how many XP they get for a kill. Finally, we'll use the ceiling function to round up to the highest integer, to ensure that we don't give them an incorrect number. Let's see what happens when we send this message. When we view the message and open it up, we can see that it's figured out all the maths for us correctly. So we only have 629 XP to go until we reach level 60, and we know that's only 31 kills if there's 20 XP per kill. As well as math functions, there are also date functions that can be used in the world. These are useful for localizing dates to ensuring accessibility, but you can also use them to add a timestamp to your messages in case a user's device is switched off when you send a message and you want to ensure that they know when you send a message to them. 
In this example, we're going to send a booking confirmation. Within the confirmation, we want to send the time that the message was sent, so we use the now variable and then format the date here. We also want to let the user know when their booking was for, so we used a booking time data tag, and again, we send in a date format. A is the day, B is the month, D is the date, and Y is the year. Let's see how that looks when we send it. Once it arrives, we can see that the first tag has now been replaced by the date and time that we sent the message. We can also see that our other dates, the booking date, has been formatted correctly. There may be times when you have to send a lot of data to users and you want to display it all as a list, or other times when you want to check through a list of data and include different information depending on the value of the data. In cases such as this, you can use a for loop. We saw a for loop being used earlier when we were sending custom data through an email. You can see here that the for loop starts just before the properties do. You can start a for loop by opening a logic tag, typing for, and then having a variable name for each of the items in the list you're looping through. Then we write in and get the custom data variable name that we want to loop through. In this case, it's properties. Under the loop opening, we then want to include tags that reference the different properties of our JSON object. In this example, we have the property reference, the property location, the property asking price, and the property description. We also included the property image as well. Let's send that and see how it looks. As we saw before, we need to use the API when sending custom data. We need to make sure that for each object, we have each of the different properties that we're referencing within our for loop. So we've got the property image, the property reference, location, asking price, and summary as well. We'll send that and see how that looks in the email. As the email arrives, we can see that the for loop has then included the information for each of the properties that were in that custom data object. The image, description, and the location reference. Now that you've seen how to personalize your messages, I'm sure you'll be full of ideas of how to make every notification you send a meaningful interaction for your users. Don't forget, if you have any questions or uncertainties when trying to add your personalizations, you can find all of the information from this video in our online documentation at documentation.onesignal.com. Alternatively, you can reach out to our global support team and we'll be happy to help. Just click on the red support button in the bottom right of your OneSignal dashboard or email support at onesignal.com to get in touch.